motherfuckers, Mr. Matt up in this bitch. Coming at you. Lie. No. No, wait. No. I'm not live. I am, uh, god damn it. I'm always pre-recorded. Damn motherfucker. So today, the day has finally come upon us where up until this day, in order to downgrade your system or hack any of the official firmware, you needed a hardware flasher, which for the Slim, you would need the E3 flasher. This has the NOR chip in it. Most of the FAT have the NAND chip. Some of them have the NOR chip, so the E3 can be used for that. Otherwise, you need something that supports NAND. So now, instead of opening up your console, this is an entirely software-based hack, and you can get your official firmware hack and you can put a custom firmware over that. So this hack is for all the fat consoles and most of the slim consoles. This will not work for any super slim console. So if you have a super slim, stop watching this video. It's not gonna work. There's some stuff in the works, but right now this hack is not for you. You will not be able to do this. If you even attempt it, you will brick your system. So do not do that. Also keep in mind that not all slims are hackable because there is a minimum firmware version that is required for this hack to work. So your console has to be capable of going down to 3.55 Sony official firmware. That means if your console ship with anything higher than that, you are not able to do this hack. Also turn off this tutorial, please, because I don't want you to brick your system. So now you're probably asking yourself, hey, Mr. Mad, how do I know what minimum firmware version my PS3 came with? Well, all right, I'll tell you. So basically, if you go on the psxplays.com, the link will be in the description below me. You're gonna see minimum version check.pup. This is the way to check what minimum version you're capable of using on your console. Go ahead and click that. It'll take you to another page. Once you're on this page, you're gonna click to view the download links. Once you got the list of links, pick something familiar. Zippy Share seems to work for me. So it says your download link is ready. Go ahead and download that and hit download now and it'll start downloading. Now that you downloaded the file, you're going to want to decompress it with something like 7-zip. Just go ahead and extract files. Just one file. Okay. I'll leave a link for 7-zip in the description as well. Now you got this file, ps3update.pub. You're going to take a USB drive, pop it into your system. You're going to want to create a folder called PS3, all caps. Make a folder inside of that, update. You're going to want to copy that file to the update folder. Paste. And then just eject this and we'll put this in the PS3 so you can see what your minimum firmware is. Once you've copied the file over, you're going to want to put your USB drive in the right slot of the PlayStation 3, just like that. As you can see, this particular PS3 is running the official 4.76 system software. So no matter what, I'm going to have to upgrade to 4.82. As you can see, I've got my high-tech MAC address blocker installed onto my screen so nobody can do weird shit to my consoles. But once you got your PUP file on the USB drive in your system, go to settings, system update, update via storage media, hit OK. It'll tell you the update data of version 2.70 can be installed on this system. All right, now that we know we can hack our PlayStation, we got to get to system software version 4.82. Let's go to uh, the PlayStation station website okay once you're here you're gonna click help system updates it's gonna take you to this page click ps3 system update and if you've got latest version 4.82 go ahead and download that shit right now so we're gonna go ahead and take our usb hard drive out of the playstation put it back into the computer you're gonna open this up and delete this file okay once that file is done downloading you may want to folderize this just put ps3 ofw 4.82 but just put that file in there that way you know that this ps3 update.pub is for the PS3 official firmware 4.82. You don't lose it, you don't mistake it for something else. You will always know what this is. We're gonna go back to our flash drive, go to the PS3 folder and the update folder, and now drop this actual official firmware 4.82 onto the drive. And now we're gonna update our system to 4.82. If you're already on 4.82, you don't have to worry about this step. Just keep on moving forward. Once that transfer, you can just eject your drive, pop it into the PlayStation on the right side USB port, and we're gonna run the system update via USB or however you like. You could do it through the internet. That's fine. Not a big deal. The whole point is to get to 4.82. All right. Once that firmware file is on your flash drive in your system, I'm going to go to system update, update via storage media. Hit OK. And we're going to update our system. Hit accept and let this run its course. So now we should be on the right firmware. I'm just going to want to go to system settings and let's verify what system software we're on. And you can see version 4.82. So let's get to hacking now. 
And then when I go back to this psxplays.com website, you're gonna see 4.82 NAND slash NOR writer. Go down to the bottom and you're gonna want the writer release 1.0. So go ahead and download that file. And once it's downloaded, we're gonna just wanna extract everything and you're gonna have your hack folder. Now that we have our files, you're gonna wanna take a USB flash drive, pop it into your computer. Go ahead and open that. And what you're gonna wanna do is take this flash.hex file, copy it over to the root of your flash drive. Then eject the drive. Then you're gonna wanna put the drive back into the PlayStation. By the way, shout out to Team PS3 Exploit, and I, I just wanna put this here. This is not my hack, I didn't make this shit. I'm just making a tutorial, you know, to make this easier for people like me who don't know how to do anything and do everything the hard way. But shout outs to uh, W, at Escort, do, at Habib, at Beguir, I don't know, I'm sorry, I've totally botched these name pronunciations, but courtesy of Team PS3 Exploit. Super shout out to them for doing this, man, this is great. Since this is a web browser based exploit, we're gonna need to run a a web server. Luckily the guys who created this hack included a mini web server. Otherwise you could use any other HTTP server. I've used my phone in the past for Wii U hacks. I'm gonna show you how to use this because this comes bundled with the whole package right here. Double click that, hit run. If this firewall thing pops up, just allow access right here. What this is, is a mini web server. The address that you're gonna access all the files that is the IP of your machine. So whatever your PC's IP is, it's gonna show you right here. You're gonna go to this website on your PlayStation and it's gonna serve these files to the PlayStation and it's gonna execute the hack. Let's go ahead and do that. One thing I forgot to mention, the way this mini web server works, in order to host the files, you're gonna to need to put them in a folder called htdocs, H-T-D-O-C-S. You're gonna to wanna to take all these files right here, drop them in here. And if your web server was open, close it and relaunch it. Now you are serving all the files and you may proceed. Once you have the flash drive in your PS3 with the flash.hex file at the root of the flash drive, we're gonna to wanna to get this thing on the internet. Once you got your console connected to the internet we're going to want to go to the internet browser go to tools home page use a blank page hit okay you're going to want to hit triangle go to tools delete cache cache memory will be deleted you want to continue go ahead and do that go back to tools delete cookies and other shit after that go to file go to address entry and we're going to type in the ip address of your machine that's hosting the files you know the mini web server and it should pop up on your server's screen in mine it was 192.168.1101 colon 8000 just hit start and since I have the slim I have the nor that's the web page I'm gonna click on right here if you have the fat some of the fats have the NAND just refer back to the website it'll show you which NAND or nor you have like I said I'm on the slim I know I have a nor I'm doing that do your research hit okay so now I just click this button right to nor flash memory it says success it says wait a few minutes until console beeps and shuts down so let's go ahead and do that remember now is not the time to be impatient just make sure you're not shutting it down too early because you may brick your system so it will beep and shut down on its own now that it beeped, it should shut down, and from here we should be able to install the custom firmware. Once the PlayStation's off, you're going to want to take that USB thumb drive out, and we're going to have to find ourselves a custom firmware. Back to the PS3 exploit page. Once you pop your drive in, you can get rid of this. We're going to replace this file now with a custom firmware PS3 update.pup file. Once you're here, you go ahead to the frequently asked questions and scroll down it says where can I find the latest 4.82 custom firmware it's gonna link you to this thread in the psxplace.com forum you can grab any custom firmware it doesn't matter because you can change it to whatever you want after that once you're here they have the standard custom firmware they got a Cobra custom firmware and a dual boot firmware so you could choose whichever you want I'm just gonna pick the first one I see 4.82 Ferox standard edition let me go ahead and click that. Click this right here. It'll take you to a mega upload site. Hit download and download your file. Once that download is complete, we could go ahead and folderize this as well and just put 4.82 Ferox. Now we have this file, go ahead to your flash drive and then just copy this file on over. This is the custom firmware. So now we're gonna update the system with this firmware and we will be on a custom firmware. Completely hacked. Once I copied over, I'm gonna rename this in all caps, ps3updat.pup, just like the other one, ps3updat.pup. I'm gonna remove this shit, pop it into the right USB port on your PlayStation 3, we should be good to go. So just turn your PlayStation on, hit back, that way you don't gotta sit here and verify the hard drive. Since it's shut down unexpectedly, it's gonna wanna verify the hard drive, but you don't wanna do that shit. Before we do this, disable your internet, just in case, you know, fuck it. So just better to be safe than sorry. So go to settings, system update and go to update via storage media so there you go hit okay 
and this should be able to install. I hit accept and start. Same process as the official firmware. Let this progress bar do its thing. I'm gonna shut off and once it boots back up, you should be on 4.82 Ferox custom firmware. Where you choose to go from there is your journey. All right, now this screen pops up. There's the PS button to use the controller. Start the process. There it is, Ferox. Ferox, I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that shit right. So here we are. We're on custom firmware and your system is officially hacked. From here you can install package files, multi-man, toolboxes, which can do shit like enable QA flags so that you can actually downgrade to a different custom firmware or something like that. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you how to downgrade to the Rebug 4.81.2 custom firmware. So let's go ahead and get on the computer. I want to also download a standalone QA flag enabler just so you don't have to rely on, you know, the Rebug toolbox or anything like that. So now if you want to add a different custom firmware you're gonna want to download this QA toggler it's gonna be a package file and while we're at it we could do the rebug shit too and just go to Google type in rebug this can be found in my previous video of how to hack a PlayStation 3 but we can do this right now as well so the latest rebug 4.81.2 still otherwise you know if you really want to stay on 4.82 it doesn't matter you can start installing packages all that stuff you know that's good shit already but I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes only go all the way to the bottom of the page and you're gonna want to download the Rex edition you get the full toolbox if you want while that's download you can go ahead and take your flash drive out of the PlayStation and put it into your PC go back to the PS3 update delete this now that we got our files you can go ahead and folderize some shit just to keep things organized here for the QA toggler standalone I'm just gonna type stand alone QA toggler right put this in here toolbox package is right here it's already pretty self-explanatory to get the Rex I give you a link just go ahead and follow this link and you will get your file and it'll start downloading. While that's downloading, you can also look up multi-man. So go to Google, grab the newest one, 4.81.02. I believe this is why you would want to stay on 4.81 Rebug because I'm not sure if this works on the newest firmware. Go ahead and download this and save that. Once you got your files downloaded, you can go ahead and folderize the shit as well. So just put Rebug CFW 4.81.2. Toss this in here. You want to go to your flash drive and put that rebug file in the update folder in the PS3 folder that's on the root of your flash drive. Once that copied over, you can get rid of all this text right here except PS3 up that dot pup. Go back to the root and get rid of this now. You don't need this file anymore. You don't want to accidentally, I don't know, fuck some shit up. We're going to go get the standalone QA toggler, put that on the root of the flash drive. We're going to get the multi man base, the rebug toolbox. And we'll just transfer them also to the root because we can install these packages through the package installer. Go ahead and eject your drive and pop it into the PS3. All right, let's install these package files through the Habib QA toggler. Let's do that first and foremost. So we can enable these QA flags and downgrade our system. From here, you can go to system update, update via storage, and okay. Start this whole process all over again. So this is just gonna downgrade to 4.81.2 rebug. All right, same as before. Uh-oh, data is corrupted. Let's try this again. All right, seems like it worked this time. One thing I forgot to mention, after you enable the QA flags, you have to restart the system for it to take effect. So since I didn't do that, it showed as data corrupted or whatever, but it's not actually corrupted, just I didn't restart the system. So now it's installing the Rebug 4.812, and I'll see you when it gets back. All right, now that rebooted. And we're now on Rebug. So we have downgraded 4.82 to this Rebug. Go to package manager, install package files. And from here you could do the rebug installation toolbox. Again, you don't necessarily need this. I just find it handy. And you can also go install the multi-man. This is the one I personally prefer. Over webman even. A webman is it's convenient if you're just loading uh, the games. But I, I like to like archive all my physical games and just put them onto the hard drive. So that's that's a good interface for me. So here we go. We got multi-man, rebug toolbox. I'm not going to show you how to use multi-man in this video. I did it in the previous hack tutorial video. I showed you how to rip your own game, install it to your hard drive, etc. But this is just to show you that all the custom firmware stuff is working. So from here, like I said, you can run this shit, you can run emulators, you know, you can run homebrew files, whatever. But yeah, here we go. So that's that. Let me get out of here before I get some type of copyright 
infringement or some shit. I don't know. This is the gist of the hack. Like I said, where you choose to go from here, you can, you know, convert your console into a developer's console so you can add like mod menus and shit like that. I may do a tutorial on that in the future sometime. Not too sure. Well, that about wraps up this tutorial. Hopefully this helped you out. This is a great solution. You don't have to buy any hardware flashers. You don't have to open up your system. You don't have to separate the heat sink from the chip or anything like that and apply thermal paste and all this other crap that you got to do when you do a hardware downgrade. This is a great gift from the PS3 exploit team. So give them your thanks. Shout them out. I'm sure they worked very hard on this. This is so many years in the making. Ever since the original 3.55 came out, you know, there really hasn't been any hacks like this, software based or anything like that. And this is ridiculous. I mean, this is amazing. It's the shit that they're capable of doing. Also, I hope you watch this video at least one time thoroughly before following along with me. I also wanted to add that even as of a couple days after the hack has been released, there's been some fraudulent files that can brick your system. So make sure 100% you're getting your files from the exact website I told you to go to. I mean the psx-place.com. Don't get it from any other place. Don't get any other different files from anything other than what is in this tutorial because there is some fraudulent shit out there with the intention of bricking systems for some un fucking known reason also the mini web server thing host it yourself you know that you, you might come across a link where somebody's hosting the files and you got to connect to their shit but it's just always safer to host your own files you don't want to be dependent on somebody else's server you don't want to fuck your system up that's all i'm trying to say if you find this useful and i'm sure you will just like the video that helps me out share it with your peoples you know anybody who who has a ps3 on an older firmware or the most current firmware they might benefit from this it's nice to have this you know, freedom to do whatever the hell you want if you haven't already please subscribe Thanks for watching and peace out!